the crypto market. Fear, uncertainty, doubt. So we talk about being in a bear market. What exactly is a bear market? All good bear market rallies end. Are we in a bear market? There is a crypto winner or a, a downturn. There's a lot of fear right now going on in crypto markets. Bitcoin is down more than 50%. Well, that's not reassuring. But if this is the end of crypto, then why is one of the largest venture capital funds committing to $4.5 billion into this supposedly disastrous sector? Is this venture capital to the rescue? Maybe, sort of, but there's more to this than meets the eye. Let's take a close look at what VC investment means for the crypto industry and how this may give you an edge when making investments during a bear market, bear market, bear market, bear market, period. Announcement today is the last day to join our new membership platform, Finova, and be eligible for our $10,000 giveaway on June 20th, on top of getting access to the best investor community on the planet, coaching every single day, trade signals, buy alerts, and a whole lot more that'll be linked in the description below. So who are these guys dropping 4.5 billion into crypto? Well, in 2009, Mark Andreessen and Benjamin Horowitz founded their venture capital firm, Andreessen Horowitz, AKA A16Z, which is kind of an acronym. Clever girl. And they're pretty good at what they do, investing in companies like Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and a whole lot more. Their interest in the tech space should be no surprise once you learn a little bit more about the founders. In 1993, Mark Andreessen, while in college, co-created the Mosaic web browser. Mosaic was the first web browser to successfully integrate inline images with text. It became the new standard for early web surfers. Andreessen took the Mosaic web browser private and renamed it Netscape Navigator in 1994. And this is where Horowitz came in. He used to be an engineer at Silicon Graphics and was hired at Netscape. He was quickly promoted to vice president of an entire department. And a few years later, Microsoft licensed the Mosaic code to create Internet Explorer. In 1998, AOL acquired Netscape for $4.2 billion and made Andreessen the chief technology officer. But he didn't stay long because in 1999, Andreessen and Horowitz founded a cloud computing company called LoudCloud. This was later renamed to Opsware and was then sold to HP for $1.6 billion in 2007. So clearly both these guys have a knack for the whole tech space. And that means one important thing. Once your name is cemented in tech history, people will practically throw money at you. So after selling their companies for a combined 5.8 billion, they started their new venture capital firm aimed at building a new type of relationship with technology companies. They wanted to offer their experience and expertise to the next generation of entrepreneurs. And of course, make a boatload of cash. I mean, it's not a charity. Okay, so they're a big fancy VC firm. What does this have to do with crypto? Why should you even care? Great question. In 2013, Andreessen Horowitz began investing in all kinds of crypto companies, and boy, have they picked some winners. In 2013, they helped raise 25 million for Coinbase's expansion. They also invested in Ripple before even the seed funding round. Then in 2018, they really got serious about investing in crypto and raised 300 million for additional projects in what's now called Crypto Fund One. And just two years later, they raised 515 million for Crypto Fund Two. In July 2021, they raised 2.2 billion for crypto investment in, you guessed it, Crypto Fund Three Tokyo Drift. Now in Crypto Fund Four, just last month, they raised 4.5 billion dollars. That's mind-bogglingly large. In this round of funding, 1.5 billion is earmarked for seed investments. 3 billion is set aside for venture investments of projects at any stage in their development. And to drive home how much Andreessen Horowitz has been involved in this sphere, here are some of the projects that they're invested in. Okay, by now you're probably like, yeah, I get it. This VC fund invests a lot of money into crypto projects. So what? Well. A look at why they chose to invest so much in this sector gives us insight into why they have become so successful as a VC firm. And it offers insights into the future of blockchain technology, which you may or may not, not financial advice, want to start using in your own portfolio. According to Mark Andreessen, many of the smartest people in computer science are going to blockchain tech, which is important for growth in the sphere. And we can't ignore that. Yes, the market is down right now, but that doesn't take away from the fact that tons of talent is leaving the Googles and the Amazons to get into Web3. This is just the beginning. And Dreesen sees distributed consensus as one of the most important technological breakthroughs in recent years. That's just basically the ability of a decentralized system to pass information without the need for a central authority, aka the whole point of the blockchain. This opportunity is bigger than just finance. Distributed systems could be great for insurance, e-commerce, voting, and really anything that currently has a middleman. So what is the A16Z strategy coming into this bear market? Well, 
In their 2022 State of Crypto newsletter, they acknowledge that while the market is down, they see this as an inevitable and natural phase of the market. Sure, we might be heading into this dark, scary, cold winter, but this in no way appears to be a concern for A16Z crypto. Their motto for this type of season is that it's better to build. It's better to build in times like this. As internet veterans who have weathered the dot-com bust, the death of AOL, the rise of selfie sticks, they've seen it all and kept investing in new technologies along the way and kept making billions along the way. Web3 is just the latest playing field. You know, I could try to explain their reasoning, but I think they said it best. Consider that any prospective founders who swore off tech and the internet in the aftermath of the early 2000s dot-com crash missed the best opportunities of the decade. Cloud computing, social networks, online video streaming, smartphones, etc. Now is the time to consider what the equivalent successes will be in Web3. So basically, don't jump ship. It's just getting good. This is the time to do research, the time to build. And this is a strong reminder to focus on value creation. A crypto project that actually generates revenue or offers a service that people use will weather a bear market far better than the latest meme. Now, what if I told you you can steal from A16Z? It's not actually that nefarious. They have a team of more than 70 crypto analysts, and being that they have the manpower of the entire Chiefs football team dedicated to just sorting out which projects are worthy of their 4.5 billion, maybe it'd be wise to start paying some attention to where they and other VC firms are investing their money. Now, you might hate VCs and that's fine, but that shouldn't get in the way of learning from them. But don't confuse that with blindly following them. While they've certainly made some good moves in the crypto space, they aren't perfect, and I have some major concerns. First, it's important to recognize that VC firms raise money for investment, meaning it's not their money being invested or gambled occasionally. When you invest, it's your money, for better or for worse. As exhilarating as it is to make money, it's infinitely more heart-wrenching to lose it. Just ask Luna UST investors. Second, when it comes to angel investments and seed funding, these aren't always opportunities that the average crypto Joe can buy into. So what I'm trying to say is maybe keep an eye on what they do, read the justifications given by their small army of analysts, and then do your own research. Don't rush yourself, understand what you're considering investing into, and do this even if it means missing out on a project because there will always be others there will always be others. Another concern is what the influence of so much VC money will have on the most essential tenant of crypto, decentralization. No one entity is supposed to have all the power in this space, but they already kind of do. Have you ever voted on a crypto project's proposal? If so, I'm sure you've noticed that your 100 token vote doesn't matter much next to some whale's 5.3 million. And this centralization is more than just frustrating. It can actually be dangerous. Hacks like Axie Infinity's Ronin Bridge revealed a shockingly easy path to obtain the required 51% of validators needed to make away with more than $600 million by forging fake withdrawals. And anyone who is part of the Luna Anchor UST community probably noticed the centralized power of the Luna Foundation Guard and Terraform Labs. Nevertheless, decentralization remains one of the core tenets of the crypto community. So what effect will large VC investments into crypto projects have on decentralization? Will those who invest early at the lowest price possible end up with far too much power? Will projects founders be so indebted to their VC investors that they make decisions to enrich and protect smart money over retail investors? These are all distinct possibilities. And for all Andreessen Horowitz's talk about working with founders and developers that they invest in, there isn't much emphasis placed on how this will affect anyone but their own investors. Listen to this. In 2016, Mark Andreessen, who is a Facebook board member, was criticized for working on behalf of Mark Zuckerberg, who was trying to maintain majority voting control of Facebook while at the same time selling off shares of the company. The plan was to convert the Zucks shares after he sold them into this new kind of share without any voting rights. Sounds like a perfect plan, you know, make money and lose zero power. And Mark Andreessen, whose job as a board member is to do what's best for the company and its shareholders, worked tirelessly on behalf of Zuckerberg to make that a reality. Now, Facebook shareholders sued Facebook and Zuckerberg eventually backed down. But what I got from this is that the powerful protect the powerful, not not retail investors. He was definitely not interested in decentralization when it came to Facebook's power. So is all hope lost? No. VC investments are a double-edged sword. Without VC funds, many projects wouldn't exist and even more wouldn't survive. This is still a new market and in a new market, there are so many opportunities, even for regular folk 
who are diligent in their research and careful in their investments to make a ton of money. But just remember that while we can learn from the big guys, big money can and will influence investments. Do you think a company like A16Z always has your back? I think you already know the answer.